This radio and many others like it have an emergency button. But exactly what does that do? Well, I had to know. So let's find out together. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So all of the APRS radios that I have looked at, including the handhelds that I have available to me, all have an emergency position comment feature. And I've always kind of been curious as to exactly what that does. Now, when I say an emergency comment feature, what I'm actually talking about is called a mic E status. Mic E is a form of compression that can be used in APRS, uh, in the APRS system. Uh, Yezu and Kenwood both include mic E statuses in the radios. And you may have seen this. There are several different statuses that you can pick in mic E. Some of those include in route, in service, committed, and returning. And you might have actually seen those if you ever look at uh, the packets that come across an APRS radio or if you take a look at those on APRS.fi. Another one of those Mike E statuses, though, is emergency. And that's the feature that we're talking about as we go through this video today. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're having some trouble finding it on your radio, it might, uh, it's going to be called something different depending on the particular radio that you're using, but it is your mic E status. It might just say position comment though, uh, in your particular radio. I believe that's exactly the way it's labeled on the Yezu FT5. Now it will depend on your exact radio, but you should be able to find this in your APRS section of your menu. Now before we dive into this, I do want to warn you, do not try this on the primary APRS frequency. In fact, if you'll stick around towards the end, I'll go over the exact procedure that I did to test this to make sure I didn't set off a thousand different radios with an emergency alert. But this is a really cool feature that you could use in the event of an emergency to alert a lot of different people around you that you had some sort of an issue going on. Now, keep in mind that this is going to be dependent on how available APRS is in your specific area of the world. If you live in an uh, area like I do, where APRS is pretty much everywhere, well, then it's going to work pretty well. However, if you live in a part of the country that doesn't have good APRS coverage, well, this is going to be kind of like shouting into the void. You're not going to get very far, and probably no one is going to hear you. So it's not an end-all, be-all solution, but it is one more thing that we do have available to us should you find yourself in a precarious predicament. Once you've turned on this feature, then every time your radio beacons with APRS, it's going to send out this emergency alert. Let's take a look at what it looks like if this emergency alert was received on an FTM 400. And again, what this looks like on the FTM 500. And one more example if the person happened to be using a Kenwood style HT. And last but not least, I wanted to see what this looked like if you received it while you were running Yak. Now, I did not get a alert tone in Yak, but I'm running on a laptop. It's the Evolve, and it's got a quirky thing going on with the speakers. I don't have any sound with that specific setup. So if I had a sound card uh, that was enabled on that particular computer, I might have got an emergency tone that alerted me to it as well. I can't say for certain, but it is clearly obvious that there is an emergency going on once that beacon is received with Yak. Now, if you want to try this yourself, you are going to need at least two APRS-capable radios 
or you can use an APRS capable radio and something else that will receive and you can feed it into Yak. A couple of words of caution here. First, be sure you're not on the primary APRS frequency. So I rolled down, I believe that was 144.280 to do this test. And then I put a dummy load on the radio that was going to transmit the emergency beacon. In addition to that, I've kind of got uh, probably a unique setup here in my shack because I do have an APRS Digipeter running right behind me. So even though I was off frequency, I did go ahead and turn that radio off during this test just to be certain that I wouldn't send this tone out to anyone other than my radio here locally. Once I was certain that I wasn't on the main frequency and the digipeter was shut off, that dummy load was on the radio, I went ahead and enabled the emergency alert on the FT5. Now, when you do enable that feature on the FT5, you are going to get a tone alerting you that you are enabling that feature and you're going to have to press the OK button a couple of times. They really want you to be certain that you know what you're doing, when you turn on the emergency alert feature. Once you have that enabled, now it's a simple matter of sending out a beacon from your HT or waiting a few minutes and the radio should beacon automatically depending on your settings. Once that beacon happens, you should see a flashing screen on the other HT and most of them will give you a tone. Now the D75 didn't give me a tone, it simply locked uh, that emergency alert onto the screen. Then you can click into it to get a few more details. Those details would already include your position uh, based on the GPS of your handheld. The other thing you might want to do is you might want to put a frequency in your comment section that you would be monitoring if somebody tried to reach back out to you by voice using a radio. This would give anyone responding to your emergency alert a way to contact you easily. So now you know exactly what the emergency alert feature is in the Mike E status and how to use it. You also know how many radios it could potentially trigger if you do this on the main APRS frequency. So by all means, please, 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 if you're going to test this, make sure you do it in a safe fashion and stay away from 144.390. It is kind of cool, though, because I never realized what this would do before I went to testing this feature. So as long as you uh, stay off of the primary APRS frequency and put your radio on a dummy load, you should be A-OK -okay to test this out. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.